This is a follow-up to our proposal for accessing the big void in the Great Pyramid from the so-called air shafts using a robot. We now present a physical prototype of a new pyramid robot which, with further development, may be able to do this. We'll first briefly recap the situation, then we'll discuss the prototype, test drilling, findings, and future options. If you want to see more videos, please like and subscribe. In 2016, Miwan detectors discovered two unknown cavities in the Great Pyramid. The first cavity was behind the chevrons on the north side. In 2023, the existence of this short corridor was confirmed, using a miniature camera. The second void, much longer and bigger, was detected above the Grand Gallery. So far, it remains unseen. In our previous episode, we proposed accessing this void using a drilling robot from within one of the so-called air shafts. We also explained that prior to accessing the void, we must first more accurately map its location. This can be done by deploying smaller muon films in the shafts with a robot. Knowing the exact location of the void, we can establish the most optimal access point. Several years have now passed since the discovery of the void, yet nobody has tried to access it. To jumpstart this process, we created a working prototype of the proposed robot. Here it is. Note that this prototype is just a proof of concept to demonstrate its ability to drill sideways in a narrow shaft. It's not a finished product that can be deployed. Our prototype departs from previous pyramid robot designs in two aspects, the undercarriage and the method to keep a stationary position. All previous pyramid robots were custom designs built from scratch. In contrast, we chose to use the undercarriage from an off-the-shelf RC car as the motion base of our robot. The advantages are twofold. One, lower prototyping cost. Two, a standard undercarriage allows mounting different superstructures for different tasks, such as depositing films or drilling. The second difference is the means to stop the robot from sliding back when it's not advancing. Previous robots had hydraulic or motorized extensions, pushing against the walls or the ceiling to keep the robot in place. We opted for a passive means, which exploits the geometry of the shafts. Thus no energy is spent just to stay in place in the inclined shaft, and the robot is lighter. This will be shown later. To test the robot, we built a short mock-up of a pyramid shaft. It's made of plywood, with a half-inch thick limestone insert for test drilling. The holes in the corner come from earlier manual tests. The limestone insert is exposed on both sides, there's no wood in the way. This mock-up shaft is inclined about 35 degrees, the average for the northern shafts. The robot can climb up this incline, roll back a bit, then climb back up, like doing mechanical pull-ups. Note that RC cars, and thus our motion base, are built for speed. We had to dial the speed down to minimum to make motion manageable over a short distance. This means that the motion base has unused capability, which may be geared down into more torque. The prototype is strong enough, but future deployable versions may carry additional loads, tow a small trailer, etc. The wedge pads in the back, which we mentioned before, can keep the robot in place on the incline without using any power. In this prototype, they're deployed manually. In the finished product, they'd be controlled by a servo. Now the all-important drill test, but first a comment about width. The Jedi robot team describes the shafts as between 20 and 24 centimeters wide, or 8 to 9 and a half inches. 
We made our mock-up shaft 8.5 inch wide and the robot 7 inches wide for better mobility. There's a 3 quarters of an inch gap on each side. So for this test, where the robot braces against the opposite wall for support, we inserted wooden shims. The width issue will be discussed later. To start the drill test, we first gently bring the drill closer to the limestone. During the test, we'll monitor the current going into the drill. The drilling starts. Since this is the first test, we run the drill only at a small fraction of its full power. According to specs, the motor is rated at 15 amps and 250 watts. Here's the drill breaking through on the other side. If this were actual deployment, we'd now withdraw the drill and insert a tiny camera to peek in. Here are the findings from our drill test. The robot was given a cover to protect from a potential dust cloud. But there was no dust cloud, at least with this type of limestone. The small protective funnel around the drill caught much of the dust blowback. Most of the dust just fell down into a neat stream down the shaft's edge. If drilling a long hole, the limestone debris would be a problem, as it would pile up. The robot would need water supply to flush the debris down the shaft. Interestingly, there's also wear on the other side, where the robot braces against the wall. For longer drilling, the bracing surfaces may need replacements. Since we ran at the fraction of the full power, heat wasn't a problem. The motor barely warmed up. The drill point reached only about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Manual drilling, applying a force of maybe 20 to 25 pounds, took three minutes. The robot drill was run at a fraction of its power, so it took 15 minutes. This can be improved, but tests at higher power would need to be done in a more secure environment, behind plexiglass, etc. for safety. Here are the current specs of the robot. Future developments and a potential deployment involve three aspects, financing, a permit, and R&D. To move forward, a project like this needs a sponsor, a businessman or company with interest in exploration. Two individuals come to mind. Elon Musk, with a great track record in exploration, with ventures such as SpaceX. His new business, The Boring Company, digs large-scale tunnels, such as this one done in Las Vegas. Accessing the big void, even though it's drilling on a tiny scale in comparison, would be a great publicity or mascot project. The second person is James Cameron. For decades now, he's done deep ocean exploration, reaching such famous targets as the Titanic, the Bismarck, and the Mariana Trench. It's worth noting that the cost in accessing the big void in the Great Pyramid is peanuts compared to the cost of any of the big projects mentioned above. Aside from financing, accessing the big void from the shafts would require a permit from the Egyptian authorities. Some people may not know, but the old Supreme Council of Antiquities doesn't exist anymore. It's been merged into the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, currently headed by Ahmed Issa. The permit is a hurdle, but big names like the ones just mentioned help open doors. On the technical side, moving forward requires mapping out the exact location of the big void with respect to the shafts. Only this way we can find the most optimal access point. Knowing this point gives us two pieces of info that would direct future R&D. The first one is the exact width of the shaft at the drilling spot. Every bit of width matters and can be used to make the robot more efficient and robust. The second piece of info is the total length of the hole that needs to be drilled. Right now, R&D is at the crossroads as far as how to drill beyond the first few inches. Option one is a rigid modular extensible drill, which may work up to a few feet. This would apply only if we're lucky, and the distance to the void is just a few feet, like the shortest distance between the shafts and the Great Gallery. 
Option 2, described in our previous video, is a self-propelled mole mechanism linked to the robot via a flexible shaft. This option is much more complex and would need far more R&D. Finally, the prototype will need some general changes. The prototype was made with 3D printed plastic. The finished product will likely need milled aluminum parts. The RC control of the motion base needs to be replaced by cable, as radio signals may be unreliable in a narrow stone shaft with turns. The wedging pads and wheels may need to be modified for limestone rather than plywood. There are known physical obstacles in the shafts found during the first robotic exploration by Ganton Brink in 1993. Fortunately, many are in the southern shafts. If they prove to be an issue, the robot may need bigger wheels, higher clearance, etc. We've shown a working prototype of a robot able to drill sideways, resting on an incline, in a confined space, like the shafts in the Great Pyramid. Accessing the big void from the shafts has advantages over other proposals. Minimum damage to the pyramid. A tiny drill hole. No drilling through structurally sensitive areas. As little impact on tourist traffic as possible. Finally, a realistic chance of getting a permit. With financing and future R&D, this project might let us peek into the mysterious big void in the Great Pyramid still within our lifetime.